it's Jen and Tammy back with the Lily Mug Matte Series now for August. For August, yep. The time is flying by. I hope you're having a good it time. Is. Tammy just gets to play with the book <laughs> and the wool, the wool and the thread. thread. Yeah. And we're having a wonderful time. We're here for you. We'd love to get your feedback. We hope you're enjoying all the amazing stitching that Tammy's bringing us. And I know you're going to bring it again. Oh, yeah. With this amazing braid. It's a I just, braid stitch. I just yeah. love it Isn't and how cool? it's tied into the um, beautiful the butterfly. butterfly wings. Of course, we have kits available with the Wooly Mug mat. The kit makes one. There's enough space for your cup right here. And if you've done the Wooly Mug mat with us before, that kit makes two. The Wooly Mug rugs. Rug. Yes, the Wooly Mug rug. I Guys, know. I've struggled with this since the beginning, and you know what? I'm going to struggle all the way all to the end of this. <laughs> So yes, whether you're making a mug mat or a mug rug, it's all fun, it's all good. These make two and this one makes one. Mm -hmm. And because it's wool, we intend to keep these going. Absolutely. We're going to keep this oh, going. Yeah. Definitely. So if you're just jumping into this for the very first time, we started this many months ago. Mm -hmm. Go back to the very beginning of the Wooly Mug Mat series, the first video, which would have been for March. In February. Yes. yes. So we always bring in those to you the month before so you have plenty of time to make it and then display it for the whole month exactly. and maybe use it if you're going to use it. Um, in that first video, we went into great detail of how to use the light box, the applique pressing sheet, pre-assembling your uh, wool and the various products in greater detail. That was a long video. It was. Because we know you might be new to that. But if you are following along in this series, we're going to kind of quickly review that and so we can jump right into the stitching Perfect. because that's the difference each month and you already know that if you're following along. So you'll, if you are going to be doing the project, you'll need a woolly mug mat for August, two pages. You have your tracing diagram, reverse refusable applique. Perfect. And you have your layout diagram, which is so essential. It is when essential. When you're using a light box, and you're now I'm using the Fusa mat. Mm -hmm. I found that at market. I'm in love with this product, Tammy. I know, I love it too. I just love perfect that. Perfect for wool wool it just it just lets go of it mm -hmm. and uh, you've seen you know I've I've used other applique pressing sheets mm -hmm. and they seem to be very effective for cotton but when it comes to wool they're not as they're not as, as strong of a performer right right this is my new favorite tool know, in my sewing amazing. room in a big way and we've got a video recorded on the fuse mat where we go into great detail and we actually do pre-assembled block of the americana table runner yes in there. so um or a section i shouldn't say a block anyway two pages um tracing diagram that's where you'll be using the heat and bond light to trace around all your shapes mm -hmm. directly on the shape roughly cut around Iron that to the back side of the wool, if there is a back side. Yep. Cut precisely on the line. I love to use the Kai scissors because it seems they're so oh, sharp. So I sharp. I love these. All and the way to the tip. They're nice in my hand. They are nice in my hand. Big scissors yep. can be just bulky yep. when you're using cutting small shapes yep. to me. These are my favorites too. I feel like I have more control. Um, we love to use the, the freezer paper, the cut right. We've been using the same thing all throughout the series. Mm -hmm. You really don't need to cut out the shape each month. Cut out a nice oval um, and you'll be cutting out two pieces of black wool for each of the projects. Mm -hmm. One to stitch on and of course Tammy's got all her stitching back here but we love to be able to cover that up in the very yep. end and kind Just of like encase that. that too. That's right. Plus, if you're going to move like those it. around, it's not disturbing the stitching. Exactly. Exactly. And it hides it. So I like how it finishes like that. it nicely. Yeah. Um, once you have all of your shapes, though, cut out, that's where you'll be using your light box. You'll be using the layout diagram underneath your pressing, or your, excuse me, your fusa mat, or if you're using the tr traditional applique pressing sheet. And that's where we'll be pre assembling the various sections. We did, mm -hmm. I think we did the, uh, the leave section. Yep. We did the butterfly, the butterfly as a separate unit. Yep. And then the sunflower okay. petals. Yep. And then brought that all together onto mm -hmm. the background, ironed that down, and now take us to what makes this project different from the last month. What makes it yeah. fun? Yeah. Makes okay. it unique. The gorgeous threads. I love is my good these start. colors. Yes. I do too. I love them. They're just vibrant. These are the silky 12 weight cottons that we use to do all the stitching with on the back. We did that with a little chenille needle and just whip stitched them down, okay? You could, if you don't want to do that, use a machine. You want to use a heavier mm. needle, size 100 
machine needle, and you stitch right through it, no problem. After you have that done, you're going to give it a good steam press. Mm -hmm. I like to steam them out. And then we begin playing with the fun threads. So I marked my background. This one I did at half an inch all the way around using my little ruler and my Mark Begone pen. I did his little antennas mm. and then I also did my uh, leaves with a friction pen and so some French knot fun. dots. So now I'm ready to stitch. I just, I, I, from my angle, mm -hmm. look at the hand eye. Isn't that beautiful? That's the thing that, I, I mean, I'll give it back to you. I just I love I it. have to remark on that. <laughs> know, There's a lot beautiful. of hand dye in this, this kit. This turquoise is it just, just incredible hand dye. If you yeah. appreciate hand dye as They're much beautiful. as I do, I love that. It's beautiful. One of our favorite colors. Okay. So okay. this so looks complicated. Can, now, a, can a beginner do this? Yes, a beginner can do this, Miss Jen. All I right. promise. I promise. I'll show you. Okay. So we're using the book right here, the embroidery and crazy quilt stitch tool right here. All of your page numbers, by the way, are mm. listed at the top of your assembly diagram. So you don't ever have to guess or try to search through your book to figure out where I am. All your numbers are listed right there. Okay? I love that. All right. So we are going to start with the braid stitch is what it's called. Okay. All right. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So I've marked my beginning and my end. So to start this stitch, I'm going to come up and I'm just going to make a little tiny stitch, like a tack stitch here. And that is to hold stitches. I'll explain what that means. So we're going to come up on our line about a quarter inch below. Okay. And now I'm going to take the back of my needle and I'm going to weave it underneath my tack stitch like that. I'm going to come down right next to where I came up. I'm going to go down about a quarter of an inch below that. And pull it tight. You make this as loose as you want so you have a nice little stitch there. And I'm going to take this and go right back into that same tack stitch again. So I'm doubling this. One, come here. I'm going to go down a quarter of an inch again, just like that. And this stitch, you can pull this stitch as tight as you want. I like to make sure that it's going to sit on the outside of my stitch like that. Okay? Now I'm going to take my thread back on my needle again and I'm going to go under these two stitches like that. Okay? Then I'm going to come in right where I came out, go down a quarter of an inch just like that. See, this is easy, Jen. I love and it. Back under, just like that. See how it's starting to make that braid already. And back down, back in where we started, quarter inch down. So you guys get the idea. You just keep going and going and going here. You just keep laying those stitches on there. You do two stitches. Once you get two stitches done, then you go back. Instead of going up here to where my first stitches were, I'm going to take my next set of stitches for this set. So you're always doing two stitches around through here. So what that did is it left a little opening right here in the middle. So I wanted to bring the gold into this. So that's where I decided to bring the gold in with a French knot. And I simply came up in the middle of the little hole that made there. I'm going to wrap it three times, back down, hang on to your thread when you do a French knot, just like that. And it lays right in there. You go down and do another one right here. It just kind of fills in that stitch and just adds a little pop of color over there. Three wraps. Scoot them down on your needle, hold them a little tight, and back down. Just like that. Isn't that cool? So after you've got your braid stitch and French knots worked here, I just use the Silky 12 weight 
silver and did his little antennas mm. with a back stitch. Put some French knots with your black. The black is not included in your kit. Right. It is extra, but I have lots of black. Okay. And then I use my green to do my stem stitch in my leaves. Oh, I Isn't love cool? it. The last thing, we're going to give that a good steam press. Sure. And you would you would steam this first. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. yep. I would steam it and that's going to take out any friction pen marks you have going ah. on. Absolutely. And I always I use a wool pressing mat because it doesn't crush your embroidery flat. It just helps it stay raised up and on the surface where I want it. Well, let's check that out. Beautiful. I, I love that it doesn't crush all that stitching. See and that? it still stays out it there. Is. Yeah, it's still there. Beautiful. And then your back would go on your and Your backing just goes on stitch. and no, do your blanket, blanket stitch. stitch. Blanket, blanket stitch. Blanket stitch around, you're good to go. Oh yeah. my and gosh. you're finished. So amazing how that stitch looks so complex. And again, mm -hmm. you've been able to break it down. I know on the book there's full color there instructions. Are very good for right and left-handed people. I know my husband would appreciate that. that. He's a left-handed. <laughs> he's, left he's not into So making. is mine, even though he's not into doing the embroidery okay. either. <laughs> well, okay. we are so hoping that you're enjoying this series again. Join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. And we are looking forward to coming back with the Wooly Mug Mat for September. Absolutely. We'll see you then. Bye.